What I personally really like about kimono is that you have this OB that you have to tie on the back and according to how to tie this OB or which arrangement or not you're gonna do with it, it's gonna change your whole outfit. And today I want to show you two ways that are my go-to OB musubi for casual OB. <laughs> In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. Obi Musubi is definitely one of the most fun about kimono. You can learn so many different Obi Musubi and according to how you tie or what you tie, your whole outfit is gonna get a whole new nuance or a whole new atmosphere or I'm just trying to find a good translation for the word freaky. <laughs> so it's absolutely clear that kimono teachers like me or kimono forums on the internet get often questions about if there are different ways to actually tie a casual obi, a so-called nagoya obi. Because the most common way to tie a nagoya obi today is the so-called otaiko. And most nagoya obi are actually made or designed in a way so it looks best tied in an otaiko. Hence, a lot of people tend to tie an otaiko with it. Otaiko is my personal favorite obi musubi. It is first of all one of the hardest to master. And secondly, I just don't want to think about too much what I'm going to tie today and otaiko is simple and also in somewhat you consider it as elegant so it works with most kimono. The second most common way you tie a nagoya obi nowadays is the so-called ginza musubi or it's also called tsunodashi and when we talk about styles or how this obi musubi should feel to you. Ginza Musubi is rather on the cool side. You would say kakoi for a Obi Musubi, while as I already mentioned, Otaiko is more like on the elegant side. In other words, when you put your outfit together and you want an outfit that is more on the cool side, for example, we have a lot of geometric patterns and probably a tiny bit darker colors, then you would, for example, tie a Ginza Musubi to give it the whole vibe for this. And if you want to keep your outfit a tiny bit more on the elegant and simple side, you would rather do an otaiko. So these are things you will also have to think about when you put together an outfit. For me, as a professional kimono stylist here in Japan, when I have a client, I have to put in consideration what type of obi musubi I'm gonna tie with that specific outfit to give it a round vibe or a round atmosphere so basically you have a red line going through the whole outfit. So it's definitely way more fun when you have a wider range of obi musubi you can tie. So today I want to share two of my favorite obi musubi or two of my go-to obi musubi when I want to make my casual kimono outfit a tiny bit more playful. And the first obi musubi is the so-called ribbon daiko. For the ribbon daiko I recommend to have a sanju or a yonju himo. This is one I made on this channel so many years ago but I'm gonna link uh, this tutorial down below or in the top right corner and you can check this out. This will help you a lot when you want to experiment with different obi musubi. It is basically a tie with a few layers of elastics in the center. And I also recommend to actually have a obimakura for ginza musubi. This is a tiny bit smaller than a regular obimakura but it really helps a lot. When you don't have either of those two I recommend to just replace them with a regular tie. It is going to work just fine and it's gonna look good. I just personally find it easier and have a nicer outcome with these two items. Again you don't need it, you can just use two ties, one for the Sanju Himo and one for the Obimakura instead. So that's absolutely fine. And last but not least, you of course need a clip as always. So let's jump right into it. Put the clip onto the collar. Take the tail of the Obi and measure one arm's length. Put this length onto your Obi Ita and clip it in place. Put the te on your right shoulder. Fold the rest of the obi up to your left 
and wrap the OB for the first time. Hold the end of the tear in place and pull with your right hand to tighten the first wrap. Wrap the OB a second time. Take off the clip and let it rest on the tear. Hold the OB with your right hand, left hand takes the end of the tear and pull to tighten the OB. Make sure that you have no wrinkles on the back and that the two layers are lining at the bottom. Take the clip and clip it onto the bottom of your OB over the right hip bone. Fold the OB in half and create a line that leads down into the clip. When your OB is quite stiff, I recommend folding it once more in half. Let this rest in your left elbow. Take the tear off your right shoulder, pull it to the left and fold the tear in half too. Put the tear on top of the tare and pull the tear through to tighten the knot. Place the knot onto the top of your obi. Now you should have the tear to your right and the long tare to your left. Start with folding the tare into half once more. And fold this up against your chest to create a loop. Place a sanju himo or tie over the knot to hold the loop down. Tie the ends on your back together. Make sure that the loop is big enough so you can fit your hand through it. Now onto the te. Take it and create three pleats in the center of the te length. Start with one in the center of the width. One below it. And then one above it. Make sure that the pleats are neatly folded in. Hold these pleats together while pulling the tear through the loop. Pull the tatter down to close the loop and to hold the pleats in place and we have successfully created a bow. Pull the tare open to full width and take your obimakura or another tie. I am going to use the small obimakura. When you pull the tare open, you can see that it will be wrinkly for quite a while and you want to put the obimakura or tie somewhere where it's gonna hang straight. This makes sure that your otaiko part is gonna be neat. Put the obimakura or tie under the tare and set it onto the sanju himo that you have used to create the bow. Then tie the ends on the back. and cover this up with the obiage. Now we are going to fold up the tare. Take an obijime and place it two hand sizes from the top of the bow. One, Two. Put the obijime under the obi and start to fold up the obi along the obijime and leave a tail of tare peeking out on the bottom. Make sure that this is about 3 to 4 cm long so you can pull it out later. Lift the obijime up your torso until it sits in the center of the obi around your waist. 
tie it temporarily on the back. Shape the obi arrangement. Make sure that both sides of the bow are equally long. And since the bottom is shaped like a ginza musubi, make sure to have a triangular shape for the otaiko part. Put your right sleeve on your right arm. Don't forget to take off the clip. Put your thumbs between obi layers and obi ita on the left of the obi knot. Turn the obi from left to right to the back. Open up the obi age and let it fall. Grab one of the ties under your armpits and pull it to the front. Keep it pulled against your back while opening up and retying it. Do the same with the other tie. Start on the back, pull it to the front, open up and tie tightly against your chest. Same for the obijime. Starting on the back, pull to the front while gliding to the front and then you retie it. Obi age and obijime are essentials for kimono dressing that you will have to practice and master individually. I have two videos linked down below so you can practice or review your obi age and obijime tying skills. Take off the clip. Straighten the kimono. And pull out the tade so it touches the highest point of your bum. Dibon Daiko is my absolute go-to because it has the sweetness of a bunko musubi and still the simplicity of a otaiko or a ginza musubi. And I do this a lot, especially when I still want to show off the pattern that is on my obi because it is still nice to have this whole part where you can just see the pattern of an obi. The next obi musubi I want to show you is the so-called ribbon musubi with nagoya obi is I think what you can call it. I personally do not like to give obi musubi a name because it usually depends on the person who came up with it and a lot of schools took it over or different teachers showed it their students and they gave it another name and this is how obi musubi names for modern obi musubi actually come to be. <laughs> so I personally don't like to refer to different obi musubi with names but everyone asks me so I'm just gonna call this one dibon musubi. Anyway for this obi musubi you need a definitely and you can't replace it a sanju himo or yonju himo so when you don't have one I do recommend to make one or try to find one I know they're a tiny bit expensive making it is definitely cheaper and again a clip and this time you really need a good clip because it will have to hold a lot in place. But you will see. So again, you need then Nagoya Obi, Obijime, Obi Age, and that's it. So let's jump right into it. Put the clip onto the collar. Take the tail of the Obi and measure one arm's length. Put this length onto your Obi Ita and clip it in place. Put the tail on your right shoulder. Fold the rest of the obi up to your left and wrap the obi for the first time. Hold the end of the tear in place and pull with your right hand to tighten the first wrap. Wrap the obi a second time. Take off the clip and let it rest on the tear. 
Hold the obi with your right hand, left hand takes the end of the tear and pull to tighten the obi. Make sure that you have no wrinkles on the back and that the two layers are lining at the bottom. Take the clip and clip it onto the bottom of your obi over the right hip bone. Fold the obi in half and create a line that leads down into the clip. When your obi is quite stiff, I recommend folding it once more in half. Let this rest in your left elbow. Take the tear off your right shoulder, pull it to the left and fold the tear in half too. Put the tear on top of the tare and pull the tear through to tighten the knot. Place the knot onto the top of your obi. Now you should have the tear to your right and the long tare to your left. Take the sanju himo and place it on your chest. Tie the ends on your back. Now you take the end of the tare. Fold it into one third of its width. And make sure that you have folded it for about one hand's length. This end will be referred to as tadesaki from now on. Put the tadesaki under the lowest layer of the sanju himo. Make sure that you have a good hand size pulled through. Now the tare should have formed this big loop. Straighten out the sides by pulling them to full width. And press this loop flat over your waist. Create three pleats in this. One in the center. one above and one below. Fold them neatly in and hold them together with the clip. That's why you need a good clip for this obi musubi. Then you take the tear and fold also three neat pleats into it. Hold these together with the top part and take the clip off. Take one side of the bow and put it under the first layer of elastic counted from top. And put the other side under the second layer of elastic. Make really sure to take the second layer from top. When you've done everything right, the elastic should form this X in the center of your bow. Pre-fold the obiage and put it behind the bow on top of the tadesaki and tie it on your back. Take the obijime, fold the tadesaki down and place the obijime under it on the height of the knot we have tied in the very beginning of this obi musubi. Fold the remaining tadesaki around the obijime. Put this on your obi and lift it all together to also lift up the knot and the bow. Bring the ends of the obijime to your back and tie them temporarily together. And again, shape the obi arrangement. Let all of the bow parts have the same length as their opposite side. And make sure that the tadesaki is centered. 
you want to make sure that the top two corners sit on your chest and then later on your back. You probably also might ask someone to fix this after you have turned the OB. Put your right sleeve on your right arm. Put your thumbs between the OB layers and OB ita on the left of the OB knot. Turn the OB from left to right to the back. Open up the OB age and let it fall. Grab the sanji himo under your armpits and pull it to the front. Keep it pulled against your back while opening up and retying it. Same for the obijime. Starting on the back, pull it to the front while gliding to the front and tie it. I can only stress again that tying obiage and obishime is really essential for kimono dressing and it's something you will have to be able to do even in your sleep. Use the two videos I have linked down below and practice or review obijime and obiage knots. Take off the clip and straighten out the kimono. Make sure that you have a straight ohashuri on the back since it will be visible with this obi musubi. This is definitely the cutest obi musubi that I have for a Nagoya obi. And I think with this white obi, it looks like a marshmallow. So <laughs> I'm absolutely in love with this. Anyway, you can totally tell that the outfit of a kimono will change according to what obi musubi you tie with it. Again, you have either a rather elegant and simple taiko, you can have a ginsu musubi more on the cool side, but you can also have a tiny bit more cuteness with setting just a ribbon on top of the Ginza Musubi and then it looks a tiny bit cuter. <laughs> or you could go the absolute cute way and make a really sweet ribbon Musubi with your Nagoya Obi. Anyway, I hope you had fun with this video. Um, if you try one of these Obi Musubi, please, please link me on Instagram so I can see it and like it and probably also share it. <laughs> and I see you in my next kimono adventure. Bye!